being here. And thank you, Mr. Tayani, for promoting our <laughs> As you all know, I did everything to bring uh, President Quintona and President Puigdemont to the European Parliament to have the necessary open dialogue about democracy and fundamental rights in the European Union. But the institutional chiefs attacked that event had to be shut down because it could pose a threat to the maintenance of public order. This is unacceptable. It goes against the rules of democracy and freedom of speech with the, which the European Union should be the first to defend. I was astonished about the events that I experienced the past days. As the youngest member of the European Parliament, I was intimidated, I was opposed in a shameful way. It would have been very easy for me to react to all of this and to have everything escalate, but I deliberately chose to not do that and work until the very last day to make this event happen at the Parliament. Because as a young politician, I want to believe in a Europe that is democratic and tolerant. I want to believe in a Europe that brings together people of different visions in a peaceful dialogue. Mr. Puigdemont had been welcomed in various parliaments in the whole European Union without any issues, today even in the Flemish Parliament. And at the same time, the European Parliament was constantly committed to defend democracy and freedom around the whole world. Therefore, it is incomprehensible that the Parliament rejected this peaceful event. By doing so, rules of democracy, rules of freedom are violated. It is unacceptable that today in Europe, people are locked up for a political opinion. And looking away from the violation of fundamental rights in the heart of a European democracy. The rejection of a serene dialogue undermines the credibility of the Thank you all of you for being with us here today. I organized this event together with Mr. Ivo Weig, Parliament and Slovenian Minister of, uh, ex Minister of Foreign Affairs. Thank you very much. broken relations to the technique, but I don't have broken relation to democracy, to freedom, to I'm always very touched when I see the enthusiasm of Catalans. When I see how nicely, how patiently you are greeting your leaders, I would love to be a leader of such a nation. I have been now for
politicians decide at the highest level to meet the problem. They receive the message, they listen. And they thoughts for the prisoners. And for everybody who is paying attention to desire to express its opinion, to express its will, and to express his adherence to the idea of independent Catalan state. So, let me finish here, and uh, I wish, President, you will always have this enthusiastic speaker with you, behind you, and you will have to fight. I know it takes some time, but you will make it. Thank you. According to the Article 11 of the European Charter of Fundamental Rights, everyone has the right to freedom of expression. This right shall include freedom to hold opinions and to receive and impart information and interferences by public authority and regardless of frontier. Well, Mr. Tajani has violated the right to freedom must be, by definition, a common house for all European citizens to meet and discuss everything. The right to information has also been violated because we have been prevented from giving our view, data and other elements to enable European citizens to be adequately informed in a variety of points of view. It is also strange that Mr. Tadjou How can that be possible when we have visited many parliaments around the world with no problem at all? Summing up, President Tajani has taken a political and ideological decision when, in fact, 
he should be the president of all Europeans, not only the most radical right wing. And he has done it, and he has done so out of fear, out of fear of our ideas, and, our, and out of fear of losing favor with his Spanish masters, instead of defending the right of all Europeans, Tajani has turned the European Parliament into a puppet of the Spanish right-wing parties. And Mr. Borrell, the Spanish foreign minister, who is always against dialogue with Catalonia. This is a shame for Europe. This is a shame for Europeans. This is a shame for everyone who has fought for freedom for decades in the continent. The practice of Mr. Tajani seems to be inspired by a boycott against Catalonia. Today, while we are here, Mr. Tajani has allowed an event on Catalonia by the neo-Frankist far-right box and has forbidden an exhibition in the European Parliament about the Catalan language. Why? Why Mr. Tajani discriminates against Catalonia? And it is doubly shameful. We are here to defend the right to self-determination of Catalonia, but also to remember she and, and social leaders are right now facing a trial that could put them in jail for decades. Because the only thing they did was to organize a referendum. Their only crime is to have defended freedom of speech. And Raúl Rumeva, former members of the European Parliament for the Green EFA group. Many of you will know them personally, always peaceful, always democratic, always defending the rights of the Catalan people and dreaming about a better Europe. They have been in jail for more than one year. They are in jail for their political ideas. They are in jail because they have been brave enough to do what they thought was right for our people. And what has Mr. Tajani done for them? For former members of the House that he today, is, today presides, nothing. He has silenced them. He has left them behind. He has tried to forget their memory. But we shall not let this happen. And this is why we are here, despite their censorship and prohibition. We are here for all the Catalan people that dream of a better future. We are here for all Europeans who believe in democracy and freedom. And we are here for Raul and for Oriol, for them and for all the political prisoners, legitimate members of the Catalan government, social leaders, the president of the Catalan parliament. We are here for our exiles that live freely in Europe but cannot go back to Spain because they could go straight to prison for a crime and violence that they never committed. A crime and violence that they never committed at the Schleswig Holstein court started, started. We are here for President Puigdemont and the rest of the exiles living in Belgium, Scotland, and Switzerland because they will not be silenced. Because the trial against them is a trial against every Catalan that believes in self-determination, a right recognized by international law. I repeat again, the European Union should be a bastion of freedom. And we are not going to remain silent because we are pro-European, we are Democrats, and we will not stand idly while others bring down this project and violate the rights of European citizens. That's why today I strongly call on all Democrats working inside the European Union institutions to stand up to it not to be silent. I was in Madrid on Tuesday when the trial started. I saw them under the scrutiny of Spanish justice. I saw the shame that the Spanish state has organized in order to justify its violent repression of the Catalan movement. Oriol Junqueras, Carme Furcadell, Joaquim Forn, Raúl Romeva, Jordi Turull, Josep Rull, Jordi Sánchez, Jordi Cuixart, Dolors Bassa, Carles Mundó, Maritxell Borràs. Just seeing them accused as if they were criminals is an attack 
to democracy, on human rights, and a shame that is improper of the Europe in the 21st century, having political prisoners and exiles from a European country. They are our social and political leaders, guilty of being Democrats and helped to organize and support the referendum on self-determination of October the 1st, 2017. Yes, guilty of being Democrats, because everything that we have done has been th done thanks to our majorities in the Catalan election and thanks to the agreements reached by the Catalan Parliament where the sovereignty of the Catalan people resides. Some European politicians keep repeating that they expect a fair trial from Spain, that there is separation of powers. This makes no empirical or historical sense. And I invite them all to follow the trial every day to how the prosecutor and the state lawyers lie without shame in order to convict our people. How they admit with their questions that it is a political trial and that they are political prisoners. The coming month are an opportunity for the international community, including international commentators, journalists, politicians, and lawyers to understand the true, the real face of Spain, to understand that allowing Spain to do all this is against the values and principles on which the European Union was founded. This is a, tri a trial against a referendum, against a democratic movement, but it's also the Spanish state that is on trial because Democrats from around the world are watching carefully. Will we able to consider Spain a Western democratic country if our people are condemned to many years in prison for having organized a referendum? Can we, do, can we do so now? They cannot have a fair trial for the simple reason that under a Spanish law, the unity of Spain is seen as more important than democracy. The unity of Spain is seen as more important than human rights. The unity of Spain is seen as more important than anything else. Mr. Lesmes, president of the Spanish Supreme Court, said on the 5th of, uh, of September of uh, uh, 2017 that the, the unity of Spain is the ultimate basis of the rule of law. How can we have a fair trial under such conditions? Spain is trapped in its vicious circle of authoritarianism and Catalonia with it. And the situation is difficult. Of course it is. But we are not going to surrender. On the contrary, we intend to go everywhere to accuse the Spanish state of having built a general cause against the Catalan independence movement, a movement that is democratic, legitimate, and peaceful. But this is no time for failed comparisons between the Catalan and the Spanish side. There is one side who imprisons and another that is imprisoned. That is a side that proposes solutions and a side that rejects them. There is a side that believes human rights and the will of the people are more important than the unity of a state. And there is a side who believes that the unity of the state is more important than human rights. This is no time for the fails neutrality among those who prefer to watch how injustice is done rather than justice applied. All Europeans who support dialogue, who believe in democracy, human rights, fair justice, and the right of nations to be free, we call, we call for your support. We need you and we need you now. We call on you to speak up, to speak up before it's too late for them, for us, and for Europe. Today we feel the urgent need to act now, and we will do so with all our force and all its consequences. We will meet more repression with more democracy, more imprisonments, with a greater desire for freedom, more threats with more unity among Catalan Democrats, higher sentences with more self-determination. If the price of defending our freedom, 
the price of defending the rights of our people and the rights and the price of defending the right of determination is my personal liberty, I will pay the price. In the same manner, our friends are paying the price of prison and exile. Some will ask us, why are you ready to risk such a high price? Well, last month I visited Stanford University and gave a lecture on the situation in Catalonia. I said there that without trust, it is very difficult to build a better society or share a political subject, a political project. And that is exactly why independence is the only way forward at this moment. How can Catalan trust the state that put its leaders in custody without a trial, that accuses them of invented crimes in order to punish a society as a whole? How can Catalans trust a state where our leaders, lifelong Democrats and peaceful leaders, like President Puigdemont, are forced into exile in order to maintain their freedom and look for real justice? How can Catalans trust a state that prefers to force us with violence to remain Spanish rather than convince us of the benefits of their project? How can Catalans trust a state that systematically treats our language as a second-rate instrument, as an inferior language, that forbids us from using it in the Spanish Congress and the European Parliament? How can Catalans trust a state where we suffer a fiscal drain of 16 billion a year, preventing us from providing better education, health, pensions, infrastructures to our people? A fiscal drain that becomes a social drain that goes against our people who are less well off and most in need. How can Catalans trust a state where the leader of the Popular Party, the leader of the so-called Liberal Party, Ciudadanos, and the leader of the neo-fascist party box agree to abolish our institutions, the parliament and the government of Catalonia, if they win the next Spanish election? How can Catalans trust a state that, even when ruled by the Socialist Party and Pedro Sánchez, does not hesitate to violate our collective and civil rights and abandon dialogue simply because they, couldn't, they could not accept the figure of an independent reporter or include the word self-determination. President Sánchez has broken the ongoing dialogue with Catalonia because he refuses to listen to 80% of Catalans that would like to see a normal bilaterally agreed referendum as in Scotland. The time has come to fulfill our right to self-determination and the process that started some years ago will continue. I want independence. My government wants independence and we don't renounce, renounce any peaceful and democratic way to achieve independence. We have offered it and always continue to offer dialogue with the Spanish government in order to find a political way to exercise our right to self-determination, always under the strict belief in nonviolence. And this is why we need international mediation, the involvement of the international community in order to sit the Spanish government at the table and have a real negotiation. Why can't Catalan people hold an agreed referendum as in Scotland? We have the same rights as European citizens. But unfortunately, as I said, the dialogue with the Spanish government has not moved forward. President Sánchez has not had the courage to confront the right wing and the Spanish neo-fascism, not even the reactionary wing of his own party. Neither the conservative government of Rajoy nor the socialist one of Sánchez have wanted real dialogue, listen the voice of the Catalan people. And so, what possible solution do the Catalan people have? Catalonia is today at the forefront 
of the fight for freedom in Europe, and we will continue to be. The referendum of self-determination of the 1st of October freed us in our hearts and minds, even we are still bound by their laws. In the last year and a half, we have learned a lot. We have learned the hard way, how difficult and how costly the path to freedom is, as did many other European nations before us. We know the sacrifice that our colleagues in prison and exile have made for us. No court can judge the idea of democracy. No exile can stop the fight for our civil and collective rights. No sentence is strong enough to stop the will of the people expressed in their ballot boxes. The proceedings that started last week are not putting me, our former government, or the Catalan pro-independence movement on trial. Whether you come from the north or the south, the east or the west, the Atlantic or the Mediterranean, what is on trial in Madrid are your civil rights as a European citizen. The democratic credibility of Europe is at stake in Madrid right now. This is not anymore a Catalan crisis. This is a European crisis. We are here to accuse the Spanish state of violating the most fundamental rights of the Catalan people, of their leaders in prison and exile. We are here to accuse them of violating European values for the sake of a border. This fake trial shows that every European citizen should stand up and defend the rights of the Catalan people because the next in line would be you. We will never surrender. We will always defend democracy and dignity. We are on the right side of history. This is why we appeal to the best quality of humanity, solidarity with just causes around the world. With your help, with your fraternity of the free people of Europe, the case of Catalonia will succeed. Thank you very much. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Dear Ralph Diorivo, thank you very much for your commitment, for your support, for your help. Uh, for us, it's very inspiring. And uh, we, we hope if when you need the support from Catalan people, you will find it. So thank you very much, and thank you, Ivo. I want to say that publicly, because it's my first time to, to explain that. Thank you for your warm and inspiring visit when I was in jail in Germany. It was very important. It was a, a light in that momentum. And uh, I will never forget that. And uh, I was in Slovenia during the days and in the independence process. And um, I feel we are uh, the French people looking for freedom around the world. Thank you very much, uh, MPs. Uh, thank you, President and Ministers and the Government Delegate here in Brussels and members of the Catalan Parliament. Ladies and gentlemen, last Tuesday, as you probably know po perfectly, a political trial against members of the previous Government of Catalonia against social leaders of the main civil organizations of Catalonia and against the former president of the Parliament of Catalonia began in Spain. 
The simple fact that this trial could take place brings shame to Spain and therefore to the entire European Union, who must, who, whose main institutions have chosen to remain silent when facing such a disgraceful situation where democracy is at stake. The majority of citizens of Catalonia as European citizens cannot understand the silence of the main European institutions, especially from the European Commission, regarding the violence they experienced in October 1st, 2017, and which was exorcised by the Spanish police well, they were voting in the referendum. And it's still harder to understand they prolonged silence while Democrats are imprisoned with impunity. European courts have shown now miserable it is preventive jail against our colleagues. The court of Slavik Holstein in Germany was clear in saying that there was no rebellion, there was no sedition. Catalans provoked no violence. Our exile in Belgium, our time in Germany, our exile in Switzerland and Scotland have shown that it is a political trial. That in Western European countries we are considered free because organizing a referendum is not a crime. That what we are living in Spain through is unthinkable in other democratic countries. The unity of Spain is not worth such violation of human rights. When we heard from the high representatives of the European Union that the Catalan conflict is an internal issue of the Spanish state, they were not aware of the serious mistake they had made. The conflict between Catalonia and Spain is a European affair. Because for more than a year, the European Union has had political prisoners and exiles. The fact is that today, we have political prisoners being deprived of freedom in European prisons, in European prisons, not Spanish prisons, European prisons. What is happening now, uh, right now in Catalonia, it can happen tomorrow to any other place in the European Union. How will we stop this from happening in those countries where authoritarian leaders are on the rise? What will the Uni European Union say if it has tolerated such situation in Catalonia. The moment has come for European Democrats to make their voice heard against intolerance. It is the moment that European institutions act as a guarantors of the rights and freedoms of all European citizens, and this includes, obviously, Catalans. European Parliament cannot continue to be an institution far from the reality of our time. We demand that it stands as a genuine democratic assembly of representatives capable of finding political solutions when an attack on the dignity of millions of people happens, as in Catalonia. Because the political trial that is taking place in Madrid is not only against 12 people, it is again more than two million Catalans who went to vote in a referendum is against those who voted legitimately in favor of independence of Catalonia and against those who voted to remain in Spain. I want to remind you that my country has always been deeply European. And it is also for this reason that we want to fully exercise our sovereignty in order to be able to share to share it with our European partners in all those areas that make us collectively stronger. We do not want to raise any borders towards any nation in Europe or anywhere in the world. On the contrary, we want to work to erase them. 
We are not talking about old style 19th or 20th century nationalism or 21st century populism. We are talking about a deeply rooted democratic political movement. I am a free European citizen who has been invited to visit or speak onto the parliaments of Flanders, Finland, Denmark, Ireland, the United Kingdom, Germany, the Faroe Islands, and Bavaria. And this has never been a threat to security and public order. As President of the European Parliament, Mr. Antonio Tajani, argues for voting uh, the possibility that President Torra and I could have addressed today the European Parliament. Ladies and gentlemen, the European Union cannot continue to support demophobic attitudes such as Mr. Tajani is standing by the Spanish political parties that have supported the, re the repression against Catalonia. Mr. Tajani has imposed a de facto gag law on Catalonia. My Europe, I think, like your Europe, defends fundamental human rights. Even if I can understand and the silence of the European Parliament with regards to the independence of Catalonia, even that, I'm shocked by the passivity of Europe in front of political trial that could lead to condemn peaceful and democratic political leaders accused of rebellion and sedition to up to 25 years in prison. I ask, I ask all the MPs to open their eyes and act as democrats. I remind you that among people in charge, there are two former deputies of this, this house, the House of the European Parliament, Oriol Junqueras and Raúl Romeva. It is time for the European Union to understand that self-determination plays in its favor, that borders are not eternal, that a strong defense of democracy is the only way, is the only way that Europe will remain loyal to its founding values. It was an American president, Rudolf Wilson, who 100 years ago put the principle of self-determination on center stage in European geopolitics. Since 1945, the West, and particularly Europe, has been governed by rules-based institutions, trade, liberalization, and democracy around the world. Since 1945, global trade has multiplied by 12, and the number of independent states has gone from around 26, uh, 76, sorry, to 195. Many are European nations. Slovenia, Latvia, Lithuania, Croatia, Estonia, Slovakia, Czechia, etc. How many European states are now independent thanks to the principle of self-determination? That's some one really thing that the European Union will be the European Union we trust if these states had not been by the European Union itself. The EU preference for democratic solutions to political conflicts are a fundamental reason why it has become increasingly rational for small nations to have their own independent states. As an independent nation, Catalonia's economic viability is certain, of course. Catalonia has an, econom an economy of the same size of Portugal or Finland with more than 200 billion GDP and exports as much as Denmark. We don't fear the physical and so institutional violence of the Spanish state. We reject it as a shame for all Europeans. The censorship instincts that today have pushed the Spanish politicians to stop us from entering the European Parliament 
are the same that bring them to agree that our political and social leaders remain in jail for political reasons. It is a hate and vengeance before rationality and the main principle of humanity's freedom. The rational, the rational solution of holding an agreed referendum like in Scotland or Quebec did has been forcefully rejected. We have proposed it dozens of times, but never a Spanish government had the courage to face the Catalan case with a look that listened to the majority of the Catalan people. We want to vote. We want to express our will through the ballot boxes. If Spain is a really a democratic state, it should listen to the demands of the people of Catalonia. Spain should listen to the courts of Belgium and Slavic Holstein. Spain should listen to the Amnesty International and the World Organization Against Torture when they call for the release of our political prisoners. Spain should listen to the American Pen Club. Spain should listen to the Catalan and American Academies of Political Science. Spain should listen to the Human Rights Watch when it says that on the 1st of October there was an excessive use of police violence. Spain should listen to the United Nations reporters. It should listen to the Nobel Peace Prizes that call for the end of repression. It should listen to all the democratic voices around the world that are calling for a political solution for a political problem. If Spain is democratic, it should allow the people of Catalonia to decide freely its future without people in prison, without people in exile, without threats. With the trial and the convergence of the Spanish right wing into an ultra-nationalist alliance, it is clear is that only an international mediation will convince the Spanish establishment that the political solution for Catalonia needs to be based on the democratic will of its people. The power of international pressure could force the Spanish state to sit around the table and negotiate. International public opinion is going to be crucial in the next weeks. That's the reason we are here and the reason we will be traveling around the world in the following weeks. A Catalan independent state will be an example of how to solve historical conflict in a democratic way and, like Scotland, will also be a partner in the effort to promote a more democratic world, a more European world. This idea should be at the core of the geopolitical vision of the European Union. Democracy, the rights of minorities, self-determination must be the soul of a new Europe as it has always been in the past. On January 24, 2017, joined by the mentioned former MPs Uriel Junqueras and Raúl Rumeva, then members of my government, and now in presented, we addressed the European Parliament to explain what we wanted to do. And I quote literally, we will defend the referendum being agreed with the Spanish government. Since it is the most plausible option for all, this offer of dialogue and consensus, and consensus shared, will remain open until the last day. We are prepared to talk about everything. The question, the date, the participation requirements, the necessary percentage of the winning option. We are sitting at the negotiation table and we will not stand until the last 
day. The offer of dialogue is permanent. Well, two years later, despite the censorship imposed by Mr. Tajani to the last two presidents of Catalonia, we are asking the Spanish state again a political solution based on dialogue and negotiation, always, always on the path of non-violence and democracy. The proposal is very simple. A referendum on self-determination agreed, bringing end and internationally recognized. Thank you so uh, much for your attention. And I hope you will see you again, uh, if it's possible, in Catalonia, in Northern Exile. Thank you very much.